In this video, we will be doing an example for the constant growth stocks. So if D0 is equals to 2 and G is a constant 6%, so your D0 over here is 2 and the growth rate is 6%. The required rate of return is 13%. So your R is 13%. Find the expected dividend stream for the next three years and their PV. So first we're supposed to find the dividend stream. Let's make a timeline. 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the dividend for the next three years. The current dividend is 2 and it's going to grow at a 6% rate. So this dividend is going to grow next year at a 6% rate. We're going to use this formula for this. D0 is 2 and it's going to grow next year. <coughs> at the 6% rate, so this will become 2.12. Now this dividend again will increase next year at the 6% rate. So D2 will be D1, 1 plus G. 2.12 growth rate is 0 0.06 and this will now become 2.247 similarly you're going to calculate it for d3 as well so this is a 2.247 now this is going to increase again at the 6% rate and this will become d3 is equals to d2 1 plus g. This will become 2.382. So what we have over here, okay, there is less space over here, so I'm going to write it over here. 2.382. Okay, so these are the dividends for the next three years. We simply applied the growth rate. So you could have done it this way or you could have used the power option as well. If you would have used that, you could have done it this way. So I'm doing the same thing, but this time I'm going to use the power. So you're not confused about it at all. D1 is equals to D0, 1 plus G, 2, 1 plus G, sorry, the growth rate was 6%. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same formula, but instead of putting D1 over here, so 2.5. One, two. So instead of putting D1 over here, I'm still using the 2 over here. So it's still D0. Now I will have to use the power because I'm bringing this this two years ahead. Right? We power one use here. We use 2.12 because we have one year. Whereas this 2 is going to come forward two years. So you will have to use power 2 for it. <coughs> So this is 2, 1 plus 0 0.06. So similarly, you're going to do it for the next year as well. So D3 will simply be and power 3. So if you're using D0 over here, you can simply change the powers for the year you want your dividend. Uh, 
Okay, it's closed. Okay, so I hope this is clear now. Right, so in the next step, you're supposed to calculate their PVs. So what is the present value formula for a single cash flow? So you're supposed to calculate the present value of this, of the second year dividend and of the third year dividend. The formula to do so is So the future value is 2.12. The rate of the return is 13%. And power will be 1 because you're bringing it back 1 year. So if you solve this, your answer is coming 1.8761. Similarly, you're supposed to calculate the present value of this as well. So if you take this back 2 years, so we're going to use it in the same formula, this time 2.247, 1 plus 0.13, and the power will be 2. Because it's coming back 2 years. So this will give you a present value of 1.7599. And lastly, you can discount this back as well. And you will use power 3 in this case. Let me just remove this so that it's neater. I'll show you the answers. In this case, you will get 1.6509 as the answer. <coughs> so this is our the presence value for these cash flow streams. Now in the next part, we're supposed to calculate the stock's intrinsic value. Now, the stock's intrinsic value is the present value of all future dividends. That is what the discount model says. That if this cash flow stream keeps on increasing, because remember, it is growing at a 6% rate every year. So, it will increase once again in year 4. Here, there will dividend ki value that you will get in year 5. Mein bhi aapko dividend will get in year 6. Mein bhi Har saal, 6% ke rate se ye dividend increase ho raha hai and it will go on till infinity yani ke infinity tak hamesha ye growth rate chalta rahega aur aapko dividend milta rahega so present value is puri cash flow stream ki infinity tak ki calculate karna bahut mushkil hai so aap fourth year ke dividend ki present value bhi nikalenge fifth year ke dividend ki present value bhi nikalenge sixth year ke dividend ki bhi and so on matlab ke it will just keep on going. Isliye you have the formula over here. Using that formula, you can actually calculate the present value of all future dividends very easily. It's your constant growth formula, which is... Okay, it's still not coming, wait. Okay, the formula is P0 equals to D1 RS minus G. So if you want to find the current stock price, you will always use D1. Okay. Remember this ke jab bhi aap stock ki price nikal rahe hote hain, aap agle saal ka dividend use karte hain, kabhi bhi yaha pe buy mistake D not use nahi hoga because this is the last dividend paid. Ye dividend already mil chuka hua hai. And if you are purchasing the dividend right now, then you will not get it. You will get the next year's dividend, milega, which is D1. So D1 was 2.12. So over here, you are buying stock ko khareed rahe ho. So this two dividend that you already paid, hai, ye aapko nahi milega. the next year dividend, which is 2.12, this is the dividend that you will get. Then you can go ahead. So D1 was 2.12, R was 0.13 and the growth rate was 6%. So the intrinsic value of the stock is 30.29, forgot the hat over here. So this is the estimated value of the stock. Okay, so now you need to understand that what exactly is this formula 
doing for you this is still calculating for you the present value of all future dividends so even if in the formula you're only using d1 this is not just d1 this is d1 till infinity all dividends so this formula actually calculates the present value of all future dividends d1 se leke infinity tak jitne bhi dividends milne hain aapko ye un sab ki present value aapko ek saath calculate karke bata raha hai that it is 30.29 so this means d2 d3 d4 and so on till infinity sare dividends included hain okay so if we go back isme ye dividend bhi included hai ye bhi included hai ye bhi included hai infinity tak jitne bhi dividends milenge sabke sab included hain isme okay so moving ahead so what is the expected market price of the stock one year from now so you no longer want p not you want p1 ek saal ke baad stock ki price kya hai so you can use the same formula so if you want to calculate p1 remember i told you that you always use a one year ahead dividend so if somebody is purchasing the stock at the end of the first year he will start receiving dividend from d2 you just have to make sure that the year that you are calculating the price you always take one year ahead in your dividend calculation so basically it's asking you ke yahan pe stock ki price kya hai ab pehle mein aapne yahan pe 0.0 pe stock ki price nikali thi p0 now it's asking thing you to calculate p1 So if you're calculating P1, यहाँ पे जो डिविडेंड है वो अब आपको नहीं मिलेगा आपको नेक्स्ट ईयर का डिविडेंड मिलेगा विच इज डी टू ओके सो वट वॉज डी टू लेट्स गो बैक एंड सी वी ऑलरेडी हैव दिस वैल्यू गो बैक बैक डी टू वॉज टू पॉइंट टू फोर सेवन So this is 2.247, 0.13 minus 0.06. Okay, so if we calculate this, this answer is coming 32.1. So the stock's price one year later will be this 32.1. And the stock's price at P not was. Mm. Right. So let me see what was the stock price before it was 30.29 so these are both stock prices but at different time periods now what are the expected dividend yield capital gain yield and total return during the first year so you're supposed to calculate dividend capital gain and total return okay Okay, so the formula for dividend yield was d1 divided by p0. D1 in our question was 2.12, and the price of the stock we calculated p0 ourselves. So p0 was coming 30.29. So the dividend yield is 7%. then you are supposed to calculate the capital gain yield as well the formula for that is p1 minus p0 divided by p0 so we have already calculated the price at the end of the first year and we already have p0 as well so p1 is 32.10 p0 was 30.29 this is coming 6% and the total return is simply dividend yield plus the capital gains yield so this is 7% this is 6% the total return is 